What's up everyone, it's Fuzzy. Welcome back to yet another MLB recap and baseball keeps getting peppered by arm issues. One more happened as I was making this script. The Mets had maybe 13 fans in attendance yesterday, which obviously I'm joking, but it was still kind of crazy to see that almost no one went to the game. A's players are kind of used to that by now and their owner spoke out on their new AAA home for the 2025 to 2027 seasons and he put his foot in his mouth. He said he's excited to see Aaron Judge hit home runs in Sacramento. Did, does he know that Aaron Judge is not on the A's? And staying with fans, Angel fans are planning a cheering event for Anthony Rendon. There's a lot happening today. Again, all of that in today's MLB recap. And just one more shout out to you guys. We have been gaining subscribers like crazy. We're going to hit half a million pretty soon, so keep it up. Thank you so much for your support. Hit that subscribe button. And just a reminder, recap is presented by SeatGeek. Use code FUZZY to save 20 bucks off all of your tickets. And do not forget to download Underdog Fantasy. Use code FUZZY, and they will match your first deposit up to $100. They have new user specials. They have baseball, basketball, any sport that you can think of. So be sure to download Underdog Fantasy. Now, unfortunately, before we talk about the games from yesterday, we have a few health updates and they're not good ones. Yuri Perez, I thought maybe he avoided catastrophe, but unfortunately that is not the case. He is out for the year. The righty is going to undergo Tommy John surgery. And the scary part about this, the Marlins, they were careful with him his entire career in the minors leading up into the big leagues. When he finally made the big leagues, when they were making a playoff stretch and they were pretty much shutting him down and Marlins fans are like, why are we doing this? We got to push him to the limit to make the playoffs. And I just hate to say that this is the result of a guy who's throwing hundred miles an hour. It seems like if you throw hard, you're going to have Tommy John at least once in your life. Johnny Lasagna, Jonathan Loisega, he is most likely out for the year, at the very least a few months with a right flexor tendon strain. Now the Yankees did sign Dennis Santana, who even the Dodgers couldn't fix, but he's got an insane sinker. He also throws that a lot and he gets a lot of chases. Matt Blake is going to be licking his chops. He might fix this guy and turn him into Clay Holmes 2.0. But regardless, this is a bad look for MLB. It just keeps on getting worse and worse and worse. Guys are throwing harder than ever. They're gripping the ball harder than ever as well. It's just going to go downhill from here, in my opinion. So before we talk about the Mets and their doubleheader with the Tigers, we got to see if the Marlins can pick up their first W of the season. So they just lost Yuri for the year. Maybe they can rally around their fallen pitcher, Yvonne Herrera. That's just rude, man. Read the room. You're supposed to strike out after I say that. Not hit your first big league home run. That kid can swing it for a catcher. But so can Jake Berger. He's not a catcher, though. But he is from St. Louis, and his family was in attendance. The other 2023 trade piece, Mr. Josh Bell, he pummeled a home run. That is a two-run shot. Jake Berger, he did it again. I'm really trying my best not to make any double-double burger jokes. It's very hard for me right now, but I'm not trying to be cringe. It's now 4-1 to one Miami. The tides might be turning, but like not for the Marlins. For the Cardinals, there's an RBI ground out for Paul Goldschmidt. Arnato, he doubles, and that scores another run. That scores Victor Scott and the Redbirds. They kept seeing red. Avon Herrera, again, read the room, buddy. Three RBIs, that's just mean. Nolan Gorman, he has a chance to get the lead, and he says, what's up, brother, to that lefty? Where was the right fielder? The right fielder was basically in center. I mean, that's a go-ahead two-run double. The DH, Alec Burleson, he put salt in the wound with another RBI. And then Mason Wynn, the youngster, he dumped the entire bag of salt in the wound. He sprints around for an RBI triple. And um, the Marlins, they lose 8-5. to five. One run allowed for every loss that they have right now, which is 8. They're 0 and 8. Time to see if we can make Miami fans feel a little bit better because the Mets are also winless. And Detroit, they were not messing around in game number one of the doubleheader. Casey Mize, this was his first start over 700 days. And Francisco Alvarez, again, what is with these guys not reading the room? You're supposed to strike out. He cracked a double in the third to break the tie. The kid's hitting 400 on the year. And look at Brett Beatty go. He's not 100% there yet, but his approach is looking much better in 2024. He singled in another for Adrian Hauser, who was very good. The newcomer went five innings only one run allowed just uh the bullpen didn't feel like bullpenning Detroit they got one in the sixth on Andy Abaya sack fly and a second run on a Jake Diekman wild pitch New York they're only up by one and that's an uno reverse card from Riley Green Adam Ottavino he gave Riley an early Christmas gift a slider middle middle and he did not miss it so now we're gonna have to go to extras and the Tigers they were threatening big time the Mets they clutched up Brett Beatty he threw a seed to home the Mets were fired up a bit but then Colt Keith he stole back the momentum he's got to be fired up. That's the rookie's first big league extra base hit. He scores Riley Green. He got Matt Veerling to third. Both of those dudes scored on a base hit that would for sure make me break a controller if it was an MLB The Show 24. Urshela, he farts one into shallow center for a two-run double as the buzz saw. Shelby Miller, he's proving he's not just the one-year wonder like last year for the Dodgers. Two more shutout innings, four strikeouts to end it. Four games already, he leads the league in appearances. The Tigers, they stay a perfect 5-0, and the Mets... 
they don't have a win yet. On to game two, the former Met Javi Baez, he punched one the other way for the game's first run, and Matt Manning, he looked special yesterday. He was using that fastball, curve, sweeper, slider, I don't know which one it is. That combination worked perfectly. He made the Mets look stupid for a solid hour and a half. He almost went six shutout, and also, by the way, he didn't allow a single base hit. So when the reliever Holton came in and got the final out, that six no-hit innings for the Tigers, they made it seven no-hit innings. When Harrison Bader, he said, we can breathe a little bit now. He breaks the no-hitter streak, and it was 13 innings at one point, dating back to game number one. Now, if you guys are animal lovers, your favorite player should be Pete Alonso because every time he leaves the yard, it's $1,000 to Animal Shelter, so I'm hoping that he hits 70. He ties the ball game up, he gives $1,000 to Animal Shelters, and he makes history all on one swing. He's the fastest player ever to 500 RBIs. He did it in 690 games. The inning went on. Marte, he bunted over Brett Beatty, duck on a pond for Tyrone Taylor, and that's a ball game. The newcomers from the Brewers actually stepped up today. Adrian Hauser in game number one. I know he didn't get the W, but Tyrone Taylor, he clutched up in game number two. Thank Thank goodness the Mets bailed out their starting pitcher Jose Butto. He went six innings, one earned run, six strikeouts. Also, it might be Budo. I'm sorry if I botched it. But there it is. The Mets are on the board. Their first W of the year. Since we talked about the Tigers, I think it's fair to talk about the Guardians and the Royals because the AL Central is looking a lot better this year. Jose Ramirez, he's finding holes left and right, but that's his seventh RBI on the year. Tyler Freeman, he might be my favorite player right now, not because he's been insane or anything, but because he stole Miles Straw's job and I don't have to watch Miles Straw play anymore. Well, Brennan, he lofted a can of corn sack fly. It's three to nothing Cleveland. And this hurts to say the PTSD is about to come back. The Guardians now have a 3-1 lead. We don't have a great history with 3-1 leads. Julian went the other way, but thankfully, Cleveland got that run back. Rokio, he got an RBI single for the fourth run, and Minnesota immediately negated that run in the next frame. They scored on a wild pitch. I think I lost 40 years off my life watching this game. It's 4-2 Cleveland, but they got out of that scary eighth. Classe, he breezed through a 1-2-3 ninth inning for his third save, so the Guardians do win 4-2. But before we move on, look at what Tanner Bybee did. The AL Rookie of the Year runner-up struck out nine over five and a third, and this is the best part. He didn't walk anyone. He was dotting upstairs and away with the slider, throwing 94-95 at the fastball. He broke out a curve every so often. He might have stolen the number two spot in that rotation over Tristan McKenzie. Cleveland is now 6-2, and two, and the Royals offense is looking much better over the last few days. Nelson Velasquez, he is so damn good. He singles in MJ Melendez in the second and quickly after the White Sox They got a gift from Bobby. He made an error to load the bases up for Moncada Moncada laced it, but Bobby he snagged it. He made it for the air He throws across his body a seed might I add to complete the double play He's got a cannon for an arm and this Nelson Velasquez kid has a cannon for a bat boom goes the dynamite If you know that reference we can be friends Andrew Vaughn got a hanging slider and he ripped it the other way Chicago they're only down by one and they knew that runs were at a premium, so Sheets, he tried to score on a sack fly, but why are we running on Hunter Renfro? Stop doing that. It's not smart. That's zero baseball IQ. You don't run on that guy. So momentum shifts back to the Royals, and they did not miss their moment. Kyle Isbell, he roped a two-run double down the right field line. It was a close play, but Renfro got his hand in there. Michael Garcia, he has been so good to begin the year. He singled in Frazier, and oh my God, this is the White Sox season in a nutshell. Two outs, an easy, easy play to end it, and he boots it. Three-run score on an error at shortstop. MJ Melendez, he got the Royals to double digits. A two-run home run to Jupiter. That ball was crushed. The Royals, they went 10 to 1 and a massive, massive tip of the cap to Seth Lugo, the newcomer. One run through his first 13 innings. Cole Reagans to Lugo to Waka. That is a pretty good one through three punch. We'll talk about Anthony Rendon and the A's right after this game. There was another rain delay on the East Coast. Now the game eventually did start, and Brian Reynolds, he started with a double to get O'Neill Cruz to third, and that set up a sack fly for Captain Jackson Winsky. Rowdy Telez is hitting 290 with five RBIs. He's looking much better. That's a two-run single up the middle. Pittsburgh, they got one more on a sack fly. That went off the bat of Henry Davis. And Brian Reynolds, he pulled a Rowdy Telez, an RBI single up the middle. The next few moments are going to be fun because we have some home runs to talk about. Yeah, you just can't throw that to Connor Joe. He's red hot. He's hitting 350 with seven RBIs after hitting his first home run right there. CJ Abrams, he pelted another. He's got two home runs, three stolen bases, and he's hitting 333. But unfortunately, to no avail, David Bednar, he finished off an easy W for the Pirates. Pittsburgh, their crew Losing their way to 6-1, and one, their first in doubles, walks, and their third in hits with runners in scoring position. Alright, so let's break down what's about to happen to Anthony Rendon and his fans in Anaheim.
time. So he is one of two players without a base hit on the year. He's 0 for 19 with five strikeouts. Angels fans, they're going to try and rally around and pull a Trey Turner. If you guys don't remember, Trey Turner, he was stinking it up for the Phillies. And the Phillies fan base, they came together, they cheered for him. And then after that standing O, Trey hit 337 with 16 home runs in 48 games. Rendon is hitting 227 with a sub 90 OPS plus since 2021. He's only played in 153 games since then. And that's not been worth $141 million. So the Angels are throwing a Hail Mary. They're going to cheer on Anthony Rendon. And maybe after that, baseball might be a priority to Rendon. So the jokes, they're flying right now because it seems like he doesn't really care that much about baseball. Let's stay with the AL West because A's owner John Fisher announced that the A's were moving to Sacramento for the 2025 to 2027 seasons, possibly 2028. Uh, they're just going to be known as the Athletics. No Sacramento Athletics. No Oakland anything. It's just the A's. Anyway, here is what he had to say about moving to Sacramento. And he brings up Aaron Judge. We're excited to be here for the next three years, playing in this uh, beautiful ballpark, uh, but also being able to be able to watch um, some of the greatest players in baseball, uh, whether they be athletics players or Aaron Judge and others, uh, launch home runs out of this very intimate, the most intimate ballpark in all of Major League Baseball for the next three years. It's just so weird that the Triple-A team for the A's is going to have a better experience than the actual MLB team. I feel bad for not only Oakland A's fans, but the players. I feel terrible for them. So before we show the best web gem from yesterday, I haven't done an Immaculate Grid in quite some time, so let's see if we can do it today. I don't know an Angel and a Red Sox. It's just escaping me right now. A 100 RBI season for the Red Sox. I'm going to go with Nomar Garcia Parra. I think he did that. Yes, he did. I wanted it under 10%. 21 season for the Red Sox. I'm going to go Porcello with a sneaky pick. Is it sneaky? 8% under 10 and... Angel and an A, Houston Street. I feel like this one actually might, wait, how do you spell, how do you spell Houston Street? Isn't that his name? Houston Street was definitely on both teams. Oh, it's 4%. Okay, there we go. A hundred RBI season for the A's. I feel like I could go with, did Matt Olson ever do that? What about Matt Chapman back in the day? I kind of want to say Matt Olson, maybe a Jose Consenco, a Frank Thomas. Um, I'm going to go Frank Thomas. I think that he possibly did it. Did he do it? He did 0.9%, a 21 season for the A's, maybe a Barry Zito, maybe a, uh, uh, oh man, I can't really, what was his name? Did, did Hal Newhouser ever have a 21 season for the A's? I don't remember. The Angels and the Cardinals. Pujols is an easy one. I feel like Jason Mott maybe played a stint with the Angels. I don't remember. 100 RBI season for the Cardinals. I think I'm going to go Craig. If I don't get this one, I'll just do some easy ones for the other ones. I'm going to go Alan Craig. I feel like he popped off for 100 RBIs in one year, and then he fell off. He didn't. All right, let's just do the easy picks. 21 season for the Cardinals. I'm going to go Bob Gibson. 100 RBI season for the Cardinals. I'm going to go Berkman. Didn't Lance Berkman do that? Or no, he didn't. Oh, this is... It started off really well, and maybe a Matt Holiday. I'm going to go Matt Holiday because I'm trying to save Pujols for this one. I could have gone with maybe – wasn't David Eckstein on both the Cardinals and – the Angels, I could have gone with him. All right, that kind of sucked. But I hope that you guys enjoyed today's recap. If you did, do me a favor, leave a like. It really helps out the channel. Hit that subscribe if you're brand new, and enjoy the web gem. Just one. Ball. Jordan Walker out towards center. Jazz back onto the track. Leaps and makes the